All right, welcome back to Swine Time Podcast here at Pipestone. Today we have a special guest to talk about a special topic. And I'll turn it over to, to Molly Peterson, who is our guest today, to talk about sustainability. But before we get into anything, Molly, would you please just tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your family, your time here at the company, what do you do, just whatever you feel like for a little bit so we kind of get a sense of who you are. Sure. Well, first of all, I'll just say I'm excited to be on the podcast today because usually I'm the behind the scene person who gets to determine what things we cut out or don't <laughs> cut out for Spencer. But uh, no, I'm excited to be in a, gu a guest today, so thank you for having me. Um, a little background on myself. I grew up on a pig farm near Brookings, South Dakota. Uh, interesting educational background. I got my double major in Spanish and Asian languages and literature at the University of Minnesota. And then I got my master's in business administration at University of South Dakota. Was fortunate enough to start here at Pipestone right after I graduated and kind of got to try, I'd say, a variety of things in my first year here, but really enjoyed the marketing piece a lot. And so I've worked here now for seven years, uh, really love it, serve as our marketing director, and in the last two years have become more involved in the sustainability side. Yeah, I know you as a marketing person, really. And I think you and I traveled through South Dakota at some point, going to farm one day. And I remember My giving first you, week? Yes. Yeah. I gave you a hard time and I felt bad about it ever since. <laughs> But so I know he's a marketing person, and then all of a sudden, well, Molly's doing other things. And so for me, as an old guy now, I've watched you come and do more and more good stuff, including being our sustainability person. Yeah. Do you have a title regarding that or not? Or just that's your Sustainability field. manager. That is your title, sustainability manager. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, and I asked about your family. You, you do have a family. Maybe you want to give them credit while you're... I do, yeah. So um, my husband is Colby Peterson. We live in Brandon, South Dakota, and he's a social science teacher in Harrisburg. And uh, we have one daughter, Madison, who's a first grader this year. So we're doing the whole spelling quiz thing at night and reading, and it's a really fun time. Yeah, fun. Yeah. Okay. So on to sustainability. What is sustainability? If That's the dorkiest thing I could ask, I think. But I think if you just, what do we mean by that when we talk about it, just to get into it? Yeah. No, that's a great question, uh, Spencer. And I think a lot of times when we and, you know, uh, producers hear the word sustainable, it's almost like it's something against us, right? Like we think of greenwashing and, you know, tree hugging and because it's been used for such a marketing, marketing advantage. But uh, the reality is sustainability is something that farmers have cared about for generations and they've practiced, you know, just naturally to take care of their land and their natural resources so they can pass it on to the next generation. And so I think it's something that we've always done. But the other reason why pig farmers should care about it more now than ever is consumers are asking about it and retailers are asking about it. And that's because there's such a disconnect now more than there ever has been for, before between the consumer and the farmer. Most mm -hmm. consumers today have never been on a farm or have never even met a farmer. So it's really important to them that we show them sustainability reports or sustainability KPIs and show them how we are being responsible and good stewards of the land um, through different materials since they, they can't come to the farm like they used to. Yeah. And so, you know, the, the expectation is there. You think it's something we're gonna, the farm will get paid a premium for or is this something that is just going to become expected and you better just be keeping up with the other farmers on delivering some evidence of sustainability? Is that... Is that a good question for that, or how, how would you frame it up? Yeah, I think there may be some attributional marketing as a result, but overall I'd say it's going to become an expectation. Um, it's not going to be something that differentiates you, but something that will be expected um, that we are transparent and authentic about what we're doing on farm. I think uh, to help get us to some of our goals, whether it's reducing carbon or getting to carbon neutral, hopefully we can find some strategies that are uh, can drive profit for the pig farmers, but uh, that's sort of what Pipestone is aimed at looking into more here over the next six to 12 months. Sure. So for calculating our carbon footprint or our, our whatever you want to frame it up as our carbon usage, our, our sustainability, the only one I'm aware of is mm. the National Pork Board has a model that's been put out there for quite a while, but that's all I'm aware of is how would we do it? How would you recommend approaching that question of calculating what is in front of us? Yeah. So. One thing that we learned as we started going on this journey is it seems like everybody has their own different little calculator and methods, but we, of course, have used uh, the National Pork Board model. Uh, we actually started on a project with them here about a year ago to try to um, update their calculator from being model-based as into more of like an actual 
database program. And what I mean by that is instead of them trying to model how much electricity they think we're using on farm or how much water they think we're using on farm, that we can just provide them that actual data instead to have yeah. it be a more relevant, accurate calculator. Um, other ones that are out there that I've heard of are the Comet Farm Tool by the USDA. Um, there's a group called Intlink that we've also done some modeling off of. Uh, so there's lots of different options. Um, we put together what we call the carbon neutral pig panel here about 12 months ago to help us answer that exact question that you're asking, Spencer, is first of all, what, what is the right calculation for a pig farm? Help validate it for us. And then second of all, to help identify some carbon reduction strategies. So after about a 12 month long process, what we learned is <clears throat> there's a lot of variances and different kinds of models and you could get a result all the way from one to five, which uh, can be very frustrating. What, and so- Wait, what do you mean? I'm thinking like, what do you even measure this as? What's the unit? You said one to five. I'm just even curious. I got one carbon. That's not a fair way to say anything, but you said one to five, what do you mean? Is it a relative score? How do you even measure this <clears throat> stuff Yeah. In units? Yep, no, thank you for uh, clarifying that. So. How we look at it is pounds of CO2 per pound of live weight. Everybody looks at it a little differently. It could be total pounds of CO2, or they could look at it in kilogram, but pounds of CO2 per pound of live weight is how we have been measuring it. Okay, and that's carbon given off by the pig when they breathe, or is that carbon that's gone into corn that gets fed to the pig that goes into what? I don't even know what, <laughs> it's forming proteins or how? Yeah. Is it going in or out of the pig, I guess, is my first question, and so, what does that mean? Yep, great question. So the total carbon footprint that would be we would be calculating is literally all carbon that it takes to produce that pound of pork. And so the what we are measuring, regardless of what calculator you decide to use, they all use the same inputs. So the three main things that we'd be taking a look at would be energy, manure, and feed. So for energy, it'd be kilowatt hours of electricity, gallons of propane, gallons of fuel and diesel. Um, on the feed, it's you know, simply the pounds of feed that you're purchasing to feed the pigs. And then some of the on-field practices uh, go into that piece as well. And then manure, it's the uh, total gallons of manure from the farm, as well as your uh, practices for applying it on field. Okay, so a lot of these things involve combustion. So you're basically, they're, you're burning fuel, giving off CO2, C, carbon monoxide. Your stuff is going out that's being consumed to create the pig is the long and short of it. Just curious. So our panel though, uh, we've got people from just Pipestone here or people from around the world or who, who sits on this thing and can you talk about that a little, just how we get informed on approaching this concept? Yeah, so we formed what we call the carbon neutral pig panel about 12 months ago and uh, we knew that we wanted to bring in a variety of expertise. First of all, we wanted to have some industry representation. So myself, uh, Dr. Luke Mingian, and Roger Cochran on the Pipestone team sit on that. Um, a couple of team members from the National Pork Board. And then uh, Randy Spronk, a producer here in Pipestone, Minnesota, and Greg Eckhart, the Sustainability Director at Holstone, all participate on the, the producer representation side. And then we wanted to make sure that we brought in a variety of expertise from universities that were really focused in on the LCA feed and manure side. So Dr. Greg Toma from the University of Arkansas has done all of the U.S. pork LCA work for the National Pork Board. He sat in on the panel. Uh, Dr. Keith Poshton and John Sheehan from Colorado State University who also helped lead the Comet Farm Tool through the USDA sat on the panel. And then a Dr. Uh, Lim Tang from the University of Minnesota whose expertise is in methane emissions and manure on the panel as well. So that was the group that we formed to help answer those two main questions. Okay, so we're trying to get smarter, trying to figure out how to frame up the question to work with our producers and answering that, those questions. Uh, I'm guessing other companies making pork out there, raising pigs, are doing something similar. Is that fair to say that this is not just us? It's people are approaching this question across the board, maybe across the world. Uh, this is my ignorance, but is it like everybody's focused on this or is this really so early that it can't even be described correctly? No, I think um, certainly there's other companies besides Pipestone and the pork industry that are focused on it. I mean, you see people coming out with their goals every year, right, of carbon reduction by 30% or even even to the point of carbon neutral by 2035. And so we're certainly not the pig only- Pig production or just- Pig production. Pig production. Yep. People are making those claims and statements. Correct. Right. And so we're certainly not the only people looking at it. Um, 
I would say the science is still really new, and so it needs a lot of validation before we can have confidence that we're all sort of talking about the same thing and using the same methodology, but we're all on the same steep learning curve together. Okay. When do you think there will be some kind of a final product for a tool to use? Any guess on that? You know, on our end, we're learning, but is it something in the next year, in the next six months, where we'll, we'll have something that our producers actually can put their hands on and start working with? Outside yeah. of just calling you for questions. Yeah. But maybe that's it. Maybe it's call Molly if you've got questions. No. No, there's a lot of tools that are out there today. The National Pork Board has their model. Comet Farm Tool through the USDA has one. Uh, there's a group called Interlink that we've worked with before. Honestly, there's dozens of options out there. I think what Pipestone is just... Uh, uh, you know, considering is, first of all, what's the most accurate methodology because they all have their different ways. And so our stance for 2020 has been, we think the most accurate, transparent way for us to show our carbon footprint is not by actually using the calculation because it's sort of like a smoke and mirrors mm -hmm. effort right now since they're all a little different. We think the most accurate way is just to simply show our raw data. So here is literally how many pounds of feed we're using on our farm and how many kilowatt hours of electricity and just providing the raw data it seems to be the most accurate, transparent method that we have right now. Okay. Are we reporting that somewhere? I'm just thinking for our sow units that we manage. Is that actually being collected and aggregated and looked at currently or is it is still too early for that even? Uh, so 2019 were our first sustainability reports for the Pipestone System sow farms. All of that information would have been reported in there last year and we'll continue to do that in 2020 moving forward. Okay. Anything else that we're doing as a company, as, as vet services for our clients or as the system for the, 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 man, the managed sow farms or interaction with people who have entrusted their dollars with us to manage? Anything else you haven't mentioned regarding sustainability that we are up to or or working on? Yeah, I'd say we talked a lot about, you know, what is the calculation of a carbon footprint and where we landed on that was there's a lot of learning yet to happen, but regardless of the calculation that you use, we need to focus on how can we actually reduce our carbon footprint. And so Pipestone has had activity in that area over the last 12 months that I can share a little bit about. Um, we've identified that manure and feed are our number two contributors to our carbon footprint. So the carbon neutral pig panel that we put together helps think about ways in those two areas that we can reduce carbon. On the manure side, we did a feasibility study on methane digesters at a couple of our Pipestone system cell farms. Um, I think for our model, in order for it to be successful, first of all, you need a lagoon site, which most of the pipes on system cell farms that we manage are deep pit. Mm -hmm. And then second of all, you need a pretty dense pig population next to each other in order for it to, you know, economically make sense. And again, we're pretty geographically spaced out. Yeah. So although I think methane digesters may be options for others, it's not an option uh, right now anyways for the pipestone system model. The second area that we've uh, looked at of carbon reduction strategies is on field. So feed makes up about 40% of our carbon footprint today. So we've worked with Dr. Keith Poshton, this, this comment farm tool that I mentioned earlier to try to figure out, well, what practices can you really change on field to make the biggest impact? And it's things like, you know, going from going to reduce till or no till or implementing cover crops or using organic fertilizer on your fields, which of course um, most of our pig farmers would do that today. And, and when you implement those, we could see a 10% all the way to a 40% reduction on the feed portion of your footprint. So we have a lot more learning to do in that space, um, but I think there's a lot of opportunity there for, for the producers we're working with. Sure. So for our producers today to reduce their carbon footprint, if they were thinking, I just want to start pursuing that, feed manure. Probably can't put a methane digester at most sites, um, but on the feed side, if they make their own feed, or if they, I guess, if they supply their own corn, they at least could potentially verify that, yeah, I'm doing no-till, strip-till, something that's a lower impact farming method and start documenting that for themselves. Is that a fair way to say it, or how, how would they even begin to answer those questions you just laid out of the, the, the feed or the manure? Yep, so exactly to your point, um, when you go to calculate your carbon footprint, you can be as general as here's how much feed I use and it just applies general practices. Or if you know where you're sourcing your feed from, you can go in and input very specific practices like the ones that I just mentioned. Um, so they could go through that process. Another thing that we're looking at is 
well, how can producers actually get paid for this? So if you're not doing those things today, but you're interested in it, is there a way that you could sell carbon credits uh, for those practices? And that's something that Pipestone is uh, looking into more, I'd say, over the next six to 12 months. So, and that would be on how they raise their, their corn, mostly. That was where they would Correct. be able to claim Corn credits. or soybeans. Yep. Okay, to raise their crops. Yep. Okay. Uh, all right. So I'm listening to this. I'm thinking it all sounds good. We talk about being more efficient. Being more efficient would, re would reduce our carbon footprint. This has got to cost some money somewhere to, to implement this stuff. And so how much would it cost? Is it going to reduce the... Is it going to reduce our profitability as we try to be more efficient with our carbon? I don't know if I'm saying that right, but this has got to cost some money somewhere, probably. Yeah, I think it really goes back to when you asked at the beginning the definition of sustainability. We can't expect, nor should consumers expect farmers to implement all of these great strategies to reduce their carbon footprint if at the end of the day they're going to not be profitable and not be able to sustain their business long term. And that's why Pipestone is really focusing now on okay, these are all great ideas, but what does that look like for the profitability of, of the pig farmer? Can they implement these things and make as much, if not more, money long-term? I don't have all the answers on that today, but that's definitely where our, our focus is, is balancing that, you know, the pigs, people, and the planet piece. Yeah, electricity mm -hmm. wasn't in the top two. You said manure and, and feed, but like for electricity, mm -hmm. what about solar panels and windmills. I see them on at pig farms and I wonder, you know, there's gotta be some government support, probably as a program to put that in. Mm -hmm. But is that something that, that we're looking at as well as, yeah, this farm could put a wind wind tower up, could put uh, solar panels outside of it to, to recoup that energy loss? Yeah, so energy really is a pretty, in comparison, small percentage of our carbon footprint, I'd say maybe 10 to 15%. But definitely renewable energy is something, you know, uh, people should look into. We have done a couple of studies at implementing solar panels or wind towers on Pipestone system sow farms and just the way that uh, we are structured, we can't take advantage of some of the tax benefits that really make it worth it for producers, but I think producers should definitely explore that. Um, something that we're looking at uh, for 2021 is actually purchasing renewable energy credits and we've been really surprised at how really affordable it is. Um, in my opinion, anyways, most of our sow farms could spend anywhere from a thousand to three thousand dollars a year to go completely to renewable energy. Okay, so the way you framed it up, I'm imagining a farmer or us or somebody raising pigs in some way is going to say, "Oh, I have I have a my customer, the, the person buying my pigs or my meat, is expecting this carbon footprint, and I'm not there. I've got to go buy carbon credits, the kind of what you're describing, so that now I've." I'm like Leonardo DiCaprio flying a jet plane. I can buy carbon credits and feel justified. <laughs> it's something like that where they would say, I need to be at a certain level. And to get there, I can either change my practices or I've got to buy some carbon credits to hit that. Is that the right way to frame it up? Yeah, I'm, I'm not suggesting that producers go out there and do that today. I think definitely there are integrators that are doing that. You know, you can either actually reduce your carbon footprint or just simply purchase offsets. Um, both are viable options. I think what Pipestone is trying to research more is how can we actually reduce it instead of just, you know, shelling out cash to cover yeah. up our carbon. Yeah. The less amount of resources that you use, the less your carbon intensity is going to be. Sure. Okay. All right, Molly, I've beat you up long enough on this. Um, if you got any closing comments, you know, you've described what what we're doing as a company, uh, the folks we're meeting with to advise us on approaching this for our cell farms or working with our clients. Um, it's kind of a, I'd say it's a new thing, but really it's not new, but it's something that continues to evolve. What else? Anything you'd want to leave for a parting comment or parting wisdom from you on what we're up to or how a farmer should think about it? No, I don't know about wisdom. I just would say, you know, I'm really excited to be on this learning curve with Pipestone and with the farmers that we work with. And I just would say, uh, Pipestone is, you know, approaching this with open arms, and I think it's good wisdom for pig farmers too, right? Don't think about sustainability as you need to be on defense, but think about it as an advantage that you can have for your business and how it can actually make you more profitable in the long term. Yeah, good. And I thought of something just now. We we do have a great advantage. Most of our producers farm corn and the beans, and could at least take advantage of the farming practice component of that. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, another company raising hogs buys all their corn. So they have to accept whatever the corn came with for its own attributes. They couldn't influence it. Okay. All right, Molly, thank you for being our guest here today. 
and look forward to seeing what you come up with over the next year or two or beyond regarding sustainability. Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks, Molly. Swine Time Podcast was created for the pork industry and individual pork producers around the country. Hosted by Dr. Spencer Wayne with the Pipestone Veterinary Services, the podcast contains pork industry news, advancements in animal care, and how to enhance your productivity. Monthly podcasts are available on Spotify, Google Music, iTunes, Anchor, and on www.pipestone.com.